Well, hello everyone. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader for WealthPress. And today is May 14th. It's a Thursday. And what do I always say? Let's get into it right now. So let's do uh, an overview of where, where we're expecting the markets to be doing today. Let's get into some news. I want to bridge for you, talk about the jobless claim numbers that came out already just a few minutes ago. That's why I did the report a little later today. And then I'll get into the weakest sector and the weakest stock in that sector. Most importantly, I want to make sure that you guys are understanding how I analyze the markets. That's the key. It's not the conclusion that we're looking at. It's the process. You know, just like when you go to a math class or when you go to a legal class or any other actually advanced college or graduate school course, nobody cares about the conclusion. They care about how you got there. And that's the key. My hope is that by you watching how I go through this process, some of it will rub off of you. So global shares declined Thursday on further pessimism about life getting back to normal. After U.S. Central Bank chief warned of hard times to come, I am on his side. I believe that's going to happen too. Investors were also braced for more jobless claim data, which already came out, and I'll get into that in a bit. The world was expecting two to three million people applied for benefit last week. The number's actually declining a little bit. And as I said, I'll get into that in just a second. Powell urged Congress and the White House to provide more help for the economy to prevent long lasting damage to an economy already bleeding millions of jobs. And I believe Democrats stepped up and asked for another $3 trillion package. Um, the one that President Trump wrote here is dead on arrival. So I, I don't think the, the Democrats got what they wanted. While costly, more assistance in government spending or tax policies will be worth it if it helps avoid long-term economic damage and leaves us with a strong recovery. But again, dead in the water, $3 trillion package. I was kind of hoping they would make a deal on that, maybe meet halfway. Let's talk about Japan a little bit. There's a lot of stuff going on, and a lot of this can impact global economy, including the U.S. stock market. Japanese officials were preparing to announce an easing of nationwide state of emergency. Japan has so far reported 687 COVID-19 deaths, but has no lockdown. They've been doing actually really well. Um, analysts say they expect markets to remain in a wait-and-see approach for weeks as investors gauge how economic reopening underway are going and i believe that is going to happen we got a lot of numbers to calculate we still don't have a denominator we don't have a vaccine there's still a lot of excuse me questions we don't have answers for investors investors excuse me want to see if second waves of coronavirus infections occur if governments lift their restrictions on businesses too soon Another flare-up in trade tensions between the U.S. and China has also recently weighted on investors. And just to remind you, back in November, we settled on the phase one of the trade war, which was very minimal. Just as we were getting things rolling, just as things were just beginning to work out, we've had this coronavirus. So it's very, very hard to predict what will happen with global trade because phase one is very far from re reaching the full impact of what's going to be happening so there's a lot of wait and see modes in the market as we speak now talking about jobless claims the interesting thing is if you look at the, the consensus the number was right about two and a half million the number was actually close to three million but it looks like the number is coming down a little higher than expected but it is moving lower the average is around 4 million, 4 million, 174,000. So we're now going a little lower. I like that, the fact that we're moving in the right direction. So that's that's positive. Um, I guess, again, as, as you see here, levels of initial claims have been staggering, but have been slowing. Further slowing is the call for May 12th week with Econo Day consensus at two and a half. Again, a little higher than expected, but better than the 3.2 million that we saw last week so again we're moving in the right direction so again today's thursday thursday we talk about the weakest sector sector to avoid stock to avoid and what do i usually start off with i usually start off with my sector guide these are the 10 s p major sectors um, as you know the s p 500 is still trading below the 200 day moving average the s p 500 is dragging us down and we're going to be opening down a little lower on the S&P. As you could see here, we rejected, let me make this a little prettier here. 
huh, usually I can get it to look a little better. There we go. So as you could see here, I called divergence. We're seeing the momentum levels on the RSI go lower and we're seeing price go up a little higher. And I, I warned everyone we were going to see a rejection of that. We did, by the way, that same divergence that you're seeing here between price action and the RSI, well, guess what? It's the same thing that forewarned us that we were going to be going in this downturn. And I was warning everyone from December all the way to February that it was gonna happen. If you don't believe me, look at my old videos. They're all on YouTube and Facebook. Notice price going higher here, and notice we're seeing divergence here. RSI going lower, price action going higher, just as we saw here. Same thing here. And that led to this, nice, right? And again, we're seeing divergence right now, and that may lead to a breakdown. I'm expecting the S&P to break below the 270 or 2700 level if you're looking at the S&P 500. This is the SPY that tracks the S&P. This is a tradable SPY S&P 500 asset. I'm expecting price action to break below 270 and come down probably to the 240, 235 level before we head higher. Um, the NASDAQ is not looking that way, but the reason, the reason, this is, this brings me to where I was going to, the sector watch. The reason you're seeing the NASDAQ 100 so strong, trading above the 200 day line, trading above the 50 day moving average is because the NASDAQ 100 has tech, healthcare and consumer discretionary. And it, it, I mean, it has a, a couple, it's got a couple of consumer uh, staples, got a couple of materials, but not 50 or 40 or 60 like the S&P, maybe two, three. So you basically have an index, the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, this one here, that has all the good stuff, the stuff that's rising, tech, healthcare, consumer discretionary, and it doesn't have much of the sectors that are lagging behind. So we wanna avoid sectors, so we wanna look at the weakest sectors. Well, as we could see here, and I'm jumping back and forth, but again, I wanna want see if you can get into my head and see how I'm doing this. So let's look at the weakest sectors. We got industrial, energy and financial. So we already know that the weakest three sectors are industrial, energy, and financial. Now let's look at stocks that are breaking down. Oh, financial, Wells Fargo, look at that, multi-low. United Airlines, again, energy stocks, airlines. So we got airline stocks breaking down, bank stocks breaking down, uh, retail stores breaking down which actually shouldn't be the case. I got to look more into this Walgreens. That should be actually rallying right now. We got Lowe's. So as you could see here, we got real estate stocks. We got a, a handful of healthcare, but mostly financials, financials, financials. Let's see more financials, more financials. So I, I see here a lot of the same story. We got airline stocks, financial stocks, and a couple of mixed mixed bags, like a healthcare stock here, which really shouldn't be here. I got to look at that. Any healthcare stock that's lagging, we got to take a look at because that may be a good short. But let's stay with the weakest sectors. The weakest sectors, once again, industrial, energy, and financial. So let's focus on that. Financial seems to be very, very, uh, very weak. So in my opinion, let's look at stocks in the financial sector. Wells Fargo breaking down. Arch Capital breaking down. Cincinnati Financial breaking down. Columbia Banking System breaking down. Wells Fargo definitely breaking down. So in my opinion, the sector that you want to avoid right now is the financial sector. And guess what? It's the weakest sector. It's down 11.63% just in the last 30 days. This is XPC1 is just 30 days. So this is in the last 30 days. Financials don't look to be improving. We're not gonna be imposing negative rates. As you could see right here, look at this in red. Negative rates, not an option, not being considered, okay? So again, we look at the, at the sectors and then just to confirm that we're on the right track, let's confirm. So. We found the weakest sector, financial. We looked at the stock. We found one, uh, let's see here, two, three, four, five, five stocks, five stocks out of, let's see here. It'll give us our number here. 
five stocks out of where is my 90 day breakdown five stocks out of 16 are financial now let's take it one step further and to confirm that what our charts are showing us that these charts are showing us is really the reality because we want to be objective so we'll go to our cumulative strength index and let's go to the weakest stocks all right united that was on our list marriott hey right, walgreens that was on our list let's see where hey look at this we got we got let's see where the bank stocks are let's see where the bank stocks are let's see if we could find them in the last sheet this is the weakest weakest stocks right now so let's see here It looks like we got a bunch of stocks, but I don't see I don't see too many bank stocks in there. So this is why we're doing what we're doing, but we are seeing airline stocks in there. United Airlines is the weakest stock right now. And if you look at United Airlines, it's on our 90-day breakdown. So this is what I wanted to show you. We want to always compare our big picture with the cumulative strength index because right now I'm not seeing bank stocks which were the weakest stocks on this list, they don't seem to be in the last page. They're not, I'm not seeing big clusters of bank stocks, but again, I am still seeing airline stocks. So we're going to shift focus, and this is why I wanted a confirmation. Um, so in this case, the weakest stock I would say would be Walgreens, WBA. It's breaking down right now. Look at this breaking down and shopping is in, in stores is increasing. So the fact that Walgreens is down is not a good sign. So a breakdown on Walgreens and on United Airlines. Again, we thought it was gonna be bank stocks, but bank stops are not on my CSI scan. So we have to shift. And what are we shifting to? We're shifting to other stocks breaking down, United Airlines and Walgreens. It's on a 90 day breakdown. The sectors are not looking good as we saw. None of those sectors, they're not, in, they're not tech, they're not consumer discretionary, and they're not healthcare sectors. Therefore, they're weak sectors, we're selling them. And as you saw here, it's on my list of breakdowns. This is my 90-day breakdown. And when I look at my CSI scan, it's also on my CSI scan. So right now, the two stocks I would be looking to sell would be Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA, and United Airlines, UAL. And again, I wanted to go through this whole process and I didn't do it beforehand. So I did not know what we would come up with, but I wanted you go through the, I wanted to go through the whole process and I wanted you to see how I compare sectors, stocks making 90 day breakdowns, comparing it to my CSI scan to make sure that those stocks are, I wanna back into this. If I can't back into what I'm looking at, two, three, four different ways, it's not worth it. Usually as I'm doing this, I'll find a common, a, a common theme. And in this case, if when we were looking at this CSI scan a couple of weeks ago, bank stocks were all the way in the bottom. It was airline stocks and bank stocks, but now I'm not seeing bank stocks there. I'm seeing still airline stocks and a couple of retail stocks. So that's what we'll focus on. We wanna match things up. And again, we're staying away from healthcare, tech, and consumer discretionary. So. I wanted you to see how I do that. I hope that helps. Now, I got something big for you. There's a secret weapon out on Wall Street. I like to call it the new money monitor, and it's about to get leaked. Pay attention. For the first time in history, three millionaire traders under the age of 50 are exposing on camera the power of the system. This system can deliver you gains of up to 900%. How about 1,460%? If you take $1,000 and you make 900%, 900%, that's $9,000. If you take $10,000, 1,460%, that's $146,000. Folks, not in a year, not in 20 years, seven days or less. Hopefully I got your attention. You don't wanna miss this. Again, three traders, millionaires under the age of 50, showing you how to make 900% return, 1,460% return. And again, not in 20 years, not in 10 years, not in 10 months, not in 10 days, in seven days or less. You don't wanna miss out on this new money 
this new money monitor. You really don't want to miss out. Follow the link below. You guys are going to love this. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.